Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another packs. Sorry I didn't record it yesterday, but today I'm gonna record one. Yay, I'm so happy. Alright, so let's get straight into this. I literally, this chapter is like six pages, so let's whiz through this. And yeah, if you guys wanna see more of this, just comment down in the description below. Remember to like and subscribe. Remember to hit that bell right next to the subscribe button. But until further notice, let's get straight into this. <clears throat> Chapter 4. I'm not hunting for his grandfather's flashlight. That was the first mistake of the trip. The moon had lit Peter's way for maybe two hours before it had drowned beneath thick clouds. He'd stumbled along in the dark for another hour before giving up. He'd slit open the sides of a garbage bag to make a long bat mat and cut the other to wear as a poncho against the cold mist and slept beside a, cul uh, a culvert. His mitt for a pillow... Actually, slept was a wild overstatement, and when the first low sun rays stabbed his eyelids, he'd awakened cold and wet from whatever dozing he'd imagined. Hmm. Okay, pretty good. His first thoughts were of Pax. Where was he this morning? Was he wet and cold too? Was he afraid? I'm coming, he said out loud as he rolled the garbage bags back into his backpack. Hold on. He ate a stick of cheese and a couple of crackers, slugged a long drink of water, then laced his boots and climbed up to the road. He was stiff and sore, but at least his anxiety had relaxed its grip. He probably hadn't traveled much more than seven or eight miles. But there was still a whole day before his grandfather would get home from work and even sus and even suspect he was gone. I'm reading such more, so more, such more, I mean, yeah, I'm, uh, good. <clears throat> According to the Atlas map, he probably had another 20 miles to go before hitting the highway. After that, he could turn west for the shortcut anywhere that looked promising. He'd slept deep in the woods tonight. Out of civilization, the riskiest part of the trip behind him. He he wished he'd paid more attention as he'd driven with his father the day before. Mistake number two. But he only recalled there would be a single sleepy town right after they exited the highway. And then the stretches of woodlands broken only by occasional farms. Peter walked for five full hours. Jesus Almighty. Blisters formed on his heels and his shoulders ached from the pack. But every step brought him closer to Pax and the home he should never have left. And he felt hopeful until a little afternoon when he hit a, a cluster of buildings that passed for, for a town square. Immediately, it seemed every person he passed was eyeing him suspiciously, wondering why he wasn't in the school. He noticed... A little while back, when a woman dragging a toddler stopped to stare outright, Peter pretended to study the window display, display in the hardware store beh beside him. In the glass, he saw his reflection, and the, and the remnants of his hopeful mood melted. His hair was tangled with leaves, his sweatshirt street, streaked in mud, and his nose reddened with what promised to be a full face sunburn by the end of the day. The kid in the window looked like a runaway, one who hadn't prepared very well. He sensed the woman moving on, but before he could leave, a shadow loomed over his shoulder. Need something, young man. Peter looked up. A man in a blue jacket and bat and ba embla emblazed, emblazoned, emblazed, em emblazoned with the store logo stood in the driveway, smoking. His arms were crossed over a sagging belly, and his hair was a thing a thinning gray. But something about the way he he something about the way he was peering down at his nose reminded Peter of a hawk he'd once seen searching for prey from the top of a setter. He pointed to the window. Peter looked back at the display seed packets. And gardening tools. Oh no, I was just, uh, do you sell flashlights? The man cocked his head 
and I Peter while he took a drag on his cigarette. And again, Peter was reminded of the hawk. Finally, he nodded. Aisle 7. No school today. Lunch break. Got to hurry back. The man stubbed out his cigarette and followed him inside, hovering nearby while Peter chose the cheapest flashlight on the rack and a pack of, of double A's. And Ian shattered him as he checked out. Outside, Peter let out the breath he hadn't known he'd been holding. He wedged everything into his pack and headed back for the intersection. Hey, kid. Peter froze. The man had fallen him outside. He yanked the thumb over his shoulder. School's a that away. Peter waved and smiled, trying to act dopey and change direction. At the corner, he risked a glance over his shoulder. The man was still watching him. Peter took off. Sudden trickles of sweat chilling the back of his neck. He didn't stop running until he reached the school entrance, then cut for the parking lot. All he wanted to do was hide for a couple of minutes, maybe crash between a couple of uh, pickups and figure out uh, an escape route. But beyond the parking lot and the utility buildings, he saw something a whole lot more appealing. A baseball diamond carved into the lime green spring grass and tucked along the third baseline, facing away from the school, an empty dugout. Peter stood at the top of, of the rise, looking down at the site. He argued with himself for only a minute. He'd like to be moving, for sure making time. But what if that guy called the police hitting the road would be risky? Anytime he rested, he could easily make up at night, since he had a flashlight now. And he was suddenly tired, bone-dead tired. Mostly, though, it was the way the field looked so welcoming, as if it were inviting him in. Peter's o Peter always felt good on a baseball field. And maybe that was a sign. He didn't think he believed in signs. But after the Coyotes last night, he wasn't sure he didn't. Peter adjusted his backpack and, lo and looped um, down the hill. In the dugout, the familiar mingled scents of leather, sweat, and stale bubblegum wrapped around him like a hug. Peter hurried into his other set of clothes and rubbed a handful of clay red dirt through his hair. When he left here, he wasn't sure he wasn't going to look like any description the police might have. He filled his thermos from a water from a water fountain, drank it all down, and filled it again. As he as he wriggled under the bench, he smiled, realizing that Pax would have chosen the same spot, protected, but with a good with but with a good vantage point, if he had wanted to rest. An hour, that was all. And then he'd cut behind the school and pick up the road again. Enough time that if the police had called had been called, they would lose interest. He arranged his baseball glove and lowered his head. Just an hour, he murmured. I won't even close my eyes. Really? Wow, that's a, a short chapter right there. Well, anyways. Was that the fourth chapter? Oh, my God. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of PAX. And, yeah, right after this, I'm just going to quickly upload the survival games, and I'm out of here. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.